I've been studying the kingfishers at the local lakes for years and they're fabulous to watch. I've even managed to film the secret world inside the nest. So when I get a call about an injured kingfisher that's just fledged there, I waste no time and head down to rescue it. One of our young kingfishers has flown into a window down at one of the lodges, so I'm just heading down to check it out. So here it is, the little kingfisher just on the balustrade here, and it's uh, looking very sorry for itself. Its head's tucked under its wing, it's all fluffed up, and it's clearly had a bang on the head uh, on the window. So I'm just gonna collect it up and see if we can get it recovered. I'm just gonna pop it in this small pet carrier, and this is a perfect size for the little kingfisher and I've put a soft blanket in there so it can't cause any more damage. So I've got the kingfisher back to base and it's now a case of seeing how it's doing. This kingfisher's only just fledged and it's around about a month old and at this stage you can't tell whether it's a male or a female. It's got a pale tip to its beak now, indicating it's a youngster. But as they get older, the male retains the black beak and the female gets an orange underbill. It's still looking a bit worse for wear, but it's been warming up in the car on the way back and it's looking slightly better. After flying into that window, it's definitely got a head injury and it'll be really suffering from shock. So for the first night, I'm just gonna leave it in this box quiet and get a heat mat under it to keep it warm. And I'll just see how it's doing in the morning. So the young kingfisher's had its first night here, so I'm just gonna see if it's ready for some food now. So the kingfisher's looking much more perky now, so I'm gonna see if I can get some food down it. Kingfishers catch their prey by diving into water, and I can't replicate that here, so I've got no choice apart from to force feed it. Now this is a really tricky job. I've gotta get that fish positioned correctly, and then make sure I can get it down the throat. So these are sticklebacks I've caught for it, and amazingly, it can eat 10 or 12 of these a day. And it's amazing a little bird like that will easily eat fish this size, swallowing them whole. So the kingfish is looking so much better now. I'm gonna give it one more night, and hopefully it's gonna be back in the wild tomorrow. The kingfisher chick's looking so much better today and while it's with us I've got registered bird ringer Jean Thorpe come in to put an ID ring on it. Oh, yeah, it's looking well perky now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So Jean's putting a ring on this bird's leg and this is a unique identification ring so we can possibly identify this bird in the future. Ring on your fingers, these heels. Amazing how small that ring is. But that's perfectly sized, so it's going to fit the bird for the rest of its life. There we go. That's it. Does that have to be just slightly oval as well on the leg? Yeah. A little funny little shape like yeah. that. Oh, that's looking great now. Yeah, it's going to be all right. All right. What do you reckon? Out tonight yeah, or tomorrow? I would, yeah. yeah. I would go out tonight, yeah. So this little kingfish has been with me a couple of days now and it's doing really well and I think it's ready for a release. You can see there it's absolutely got stunning colours and I can tell by the way it's wriggling it can probably fly now so uh, that's the important thing when I let this kingfisher go near water that it can actually fly but I can just tell by the way it's wriggling it's fit and strong now. So this is a great outcome this kingfish is ready to be released now. And when it came in, I thought it'd be literally 50-50 whether we would get it back. And I'm so pleased that it's doing well. This is absolutely perfect, a lovely summer's evening. So I'm gonna head back in here and just release the chick. There's only one thing left to do, and that's to give it a few fish before I send it off. But it's flitting around in there, it's ready to go. All right, so this is its last feed. It's gonna have to learn how to catch fish very quickly because the adults actually only look after them for a few days. So 
So those fish will certainly get it through the night and uh, it'll wake up tomorrow and it's going to be actually wild again, which is absolutely superb. So I don't want to release it near open water just in case it splashes down right in the uh, middle of the lake. So I'm going to pop it on this branch. So this is the best bit about rehabbing birds, releasing them. He's raring to go. Just find your feet, find your feet. There you go. That's it, that's it, just find your feet. All right, you're free. So it's been inside the rescue bag for a couple of days and it's uh, just taking it all in. It's actually got quite used to me feeding it and things. I'm not going to move too much just yet because I want it just to surveil all of its surroundings so when it does fly, it flies in the correct place. Here we go, it's thinking of flying now. Oh, boot on me. <laughs> There we go, brilliant. And it's actually landed again on a branch over there. Superb, absolutely superb. So that was absolutely amazing. The kingfish is just heading down these bushes now. So I'm gonna stay with it until dark and I'm gonna leave it for its parents to look after. But that was just brilliant. It's been fabulous to help this little kingfisher. Now I've got it back to full health. It's absolutely stunning to see it where it should be, back in the wild. If you'd like to see inside the secret world of a kingfisher nest, check out the link above. And for more examples of my wildlife rescue work, I've put a link to the playlist in the description below. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to see more. Here's a taste of what you'll enjoy seeing on this channel.